Tell me, Mary, you know your uncle perhaps better than anyone else uh, at the moment. Uh, what's going through his mind? What's he doing right now in that building behind us? Hey, not to be, uh, not to put too fine a point on it, he's freaking out. Uh, he is in a unique position. Uh, he is, for the first time in his life, faced with an undeniable loss out of which nobody can help him. Uh, nobody's going to buy him out of it. Nobody's going to cheat him out of it. And nobody is going to use their connections to get him out of it. So uh, he is facing something that is utterly intolerable for him. And I think we see that playing out in his desperation and the desperation of his surrogates. We've talked a lot in the past about his fear of failure because of his father. Is that fear of failure now haunting him? Well, that's a, that's a huge part of it. And we have to remember that uh, it's, it's not simply that he's losing. It's that the Republicans gain seats in the House and it looks like the Republicans might hang on to the Senate, which means that it's a repudiation only of him. And that's going to make him even angrier. So it's personal. Absolutely, it's personal. And there's no spinning away from that, as it looks like a Vice President Biden's lead continues to increase, not just in the popular vote, but potentially in the Electoral College vote as well. And assuming for a minute that he is going to lose this election, that the numbers pan out as we've all been predicting in the last 24 hours or so, do you think there will be a scintilla of regret in your uncle's mind about the kind of things that he said all along, from the very beginning of the Bertha campaign to you know, being rude about the late John McCain to even what he said last night about stealing the election? No, there, there won't be any regret whatsoever because that would suggest that he can acknowledge that he's done something wrong, which he cannot do. So we're in for a very difficult 76 day period. Uh, I have no doubt in my mind there will be legal challenges, which will most likely go nowhere, which will increase his levels of anger. Um, I'm afraid also that we'll probably be seeing people abandoning him, um, which will also increase his levels of anger. So he can continue to do a lot of damage, even though uh, when and if Vice President Biden becomes president-elect Biden, um, he still has the power of the presidency for the next 76 days, and we need to be prepared for uh, anything that he might um, have in mind. Because one thing that's really important to remember about Donald, if he thinks he's going down, he's going to try to take the rest of us down with him. Are you serious? Well, yeah, of course I'm serious. We, we saw that last night at 7 o'clock Eastern time. He gave a speech in which he essentially told people that the legitimacy of the United States elections could not be trusted. This is the man in the Oval Office. This is the most powerful person in the country. This is ostensibly the leader of the country telling people that we cannot trust the vote, which has been sacred in this country for over 200 years. So that is a, you know, that's an attempted coup. We can't uh, be delicate about this. We need to be very straightforward about what's going on here. This is, the consequences of this cannot be underestimated, and it's going to take us a very, very long time to uh, repair the damage he's inflicting upon us right now. And you don't think there's any hope that he might actually just concede and do the honorable thing and leave? Well, he's incapable of doing anything honorable. And I think it's extraordinarily unlikely that he concedes. If he were to, it would be grudging. Um, but what I know for a fact that he will not do, or I shouldn't say for a fact, but uh, it is my considered opinion that he will do absolutely nothing to uh, engage in the traditional gestures that uh, incumbents who lose engage in, which would be helping the new incoming administration uh, be prepared, uh, you know, 
being engaged in a peaceful transfer of power. Donald will not do these things. If anything, he will undermine a Biden-Harris administration at every turn in the hopes of rendering them illegitimate, at least in the eyes of his most fanatical followers. Your uncle has been, uh, you know, very negative about you. He said, you're, you know, you wrote your book essentially to make some money and you behaved like a traitor. I mean, and also it has to be said that 70 million Americans voted for him. So how do you respond to both those things? Well, as for what Donald says about me, I, I don't care. Um, the only traitor here is him. He's, he has betrayed his country, uh, which definitely overshadows anything I may or may have done in the context of my family. Um, as for the fact that 70 million Americans, after four years of racism, misogyny, cruelty, um, after willfully mishandling a pandemic so badly that a hundred and over a hundred thousand Americans were infected with coronavirus yesterday. 1,600 Americans died yesterday. In excess of 240,000 Americans are dead because he has not handled this pandemic well at all. In fact, he's willfully mishandled it. The fact that 70 million people were willing to vote for four more years of this is um, a permanent stain on America. It is utterly soul crushing. Finally, Mary, tell me what his family is thinking right now. His daughter, Ivanka, his sons, they're so much part of all this. You know, his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, what are they doing right now? Are they loyal to him? Yeah, I am, they, well, they'll be loyal to him as, as long as it's expedient to be loyal to him. I'm sure that they are panicking just as much as he is, but in very different ways. There may indeed come a time uh, that they try to distance themselves from him but, you know, we're a long ways away from that because they're all in on this. And not only that, but they're in complicit in a lot of things that uh, may be looked into by the New York State Attorney General and the Southern District of New York. So uh, it's going to be fascinating to see how all of this unfolds. But my main concern right now is that we survive the next 76 days. If you could say one thing to him today as he's con contemplating his future, what would you say to him very briefly? I'd say concede, but I also know that that's never going to happen. I don't believe there's anything anybody could say to him at this point because he's way too narcissistically injured to deal with facing his loss. Mary Trump, thank you very much indeed for coming on the program.